It's always hard to review a game which is well known for being one of the worst on the console. But on my never-ending quest to review all N64 games, sadly there would always come a time when I would need to sit down and be showered in the wretched hot sticky mess that is Carmageddon 64. Before talking about the N64 game, I will say that the PC original is actually a very solid game. It has a deserved cult following and offered up some senseless fun to while away the hours back in the day. So Titus decided that they simply must have the crown of having some of the worst games on the N64, and so gave the job of making an N64 port in a short space of time to Software Creations. Then a few months later, out popped Carmageddon 64. To be fair though, the real reason this travesty exists is only because Titus inherited the franchise from Interplay when they bought the company. In an attempt to make a quick return on the cash they laid out, they churned this game out and it sits proudly along Superman 64 as being a game that should never have been released to the public. The first big point that you've probably noticed already is that whereas the PC version released had you splattering humans all over the place with limbs flying everywhere, Carmageddon 64 has you running down zombies who drip a little green ooze and then disappear within seconds. It takes away one of the funnest parts of the real Carmageddon and that's turning the screen crimson with corpses everywhere. To be fair though, it got even worse for the Germans, who due to censorship laws had the zombies turned into wacky looking dinosaurs. But then again, Doom was banned there until not so long ago, so they really did get the short end of this stick. Now you may be wondering if your screen has been smeared in Vaseline, but fear not. That is just the game's insanely low res textures and poor graphics. Everything is lacking any form of detail, and hilariously the frame rate is garbage too. The game plods along and stutters at anything bigger than a set pixel grouped together as on screen. Mix in with this some poor track design, uninspired courses and bland visuals wherever you look and Titus have almost outdone themselves by releasing a game as bad at looking as Superman 64. It's not quite that bad but it doesn't get much worse than this. But my biggest complaint in the game is the controls. The cars handle terribly and if you so much as breathe near the N64 analog stick then your car will be trying to pull a 180 and flailing all over the road. There is nothing more satisfying in the PC version than a perfectly lined up high speed drive which would take down more humans than the Ebola virus, but right here in this version it's harder to line up kills than driving a Robin Reliant down the M6. So on to the sound department, well the game has noise contained in the grey cartridge, but referring to it as anything more than noise would be doing an injustice to anyone who's ever been a composer or a sound designer on a game. The engine noises are ridiculous, the entire effects catalogue is laughable and are by far some of the worst on any console game of all time. So bad in fact that I'm struggling to come up with games which I think sound worse, so if you do have any suggestions then let me know in the comments down below. I'm finding it really difficult to summarise my feelings about this game, but here's my take on it. When you were a kid you'd often see and play these amazing games on huge arcade cabinets that were a blast to play. You'd happily pump money into them and they were far superior to anything you'd ever be able to play on a home console at that time. Then, usually a bit later when the home port would come out, you'd eagerly pick it up, hoping that it was at least close to the arcade original. Now if you're old like I am, then you'll remember the disappointment that you would often experience when playing at home, and that's how I feel when playing this. The PC version is fun, and it's a great all-round game. And sure, this may share the same title, but is as far away from the original that it's even hard to compare the two games. This is a game that you should avoid at all costs whatever, and whatever you do, don't let the awesome cover art convince you otherwise. But hey, I'm just one person with my feelings, so now let me know yours in the comments down below. I'd especially love to hear from those of you who have played both this version and the PC one, and how you'd compare them. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time.